He was right. The people who make this district such a wonderful place to work and learn are often not in the limelight. They're out there in the trenches every day, working hard, striving to make our children receive the very best education. Good afternoon, and welcome to the 56th Annual First Decker Teacher Award Program. My name is Viola Collin, and I'm the President of the Midland City Education Association, representing the teaching and special services staff for the Midland Public Schools. I am pleased to co-sponsor this event with the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. This program is one of the highlights of our school year. A time to honor our retiring staff, recognize years of service for our students in this community, and applaud for our finest educators as winners of the First Decker Teacher Proficiency Award. Many cuts to our school resources have been made for this district, but over the past several years, I am proud to say that the effort and the dedication of our teaching staff has not been cut or compromised. Teachers work extraordinarily hard and face much adversity. Despite these challenges, we continue to rank as one of the most decorated districts in the state and the nation. Not only for our students' academic achievements, but for extracurricular activities as well. In order to be successful in this job, you need to recognize early on that this really isn't just a job at all, but a passion for children. A passion to shape their futures for the better. To create an environment where they are safe to take risks in order to reach their highest potential. Our staff is always willing to do the hard work to make our education of our students their priority. Ultimately, the success of a child in school is made possible by the generous heart of a teacher. I use the word generous because the work of a teacher does not end at the close of the school day. Many personal hours and days are dedicated not only to reading papers, planning lessons, but also learning new instructional techniques and curriculum during the off summer months. Teachers know that the true success only happens when preparation meets opportunity. With so many unknown factors pending our district today, the one constant in our lives, the one thing we can count on, is the performance of an exemplary staff. Everyone seems to know what good teaching is. Everyone seems to know what great teachers ought to do. But it's difficult to pinpoint or define. I know that each of our teachers that will be recognized this afternoon are individuals who respect <coughs> and cherish students. Of course, none of this success would be possible without the overwhelming support of our parents, support staff, and community members. And we thank you all. I know in my heart, we are a community that will never give up on supporting quality public, public education for all of our students. The teachers being honored today do not only represent what the precious resource of a dedicated teacher is, but they also know that valuing and supporting the quality education for our youth is the only chance we will have, have to improve our future. Shortly, you will hear some stories that are a perfect example of how outstanding educators continue to shine despite the challenging times we face. I hope our winners can appreciate their accomplishments and this recognition. But most of all, we'll appreciate how their legacy of service will live on in the children that they have taught. Speaking of legacy and service, I ask you to take a moment to consider the list of names in your program, where we celebrate previous <coughs> First Decker winners dating back to when the First Decker family established this award in 1956. <coughs> On this list are some of the finest people to ever grace this community with their passion for teaching. 
I wish to thank the Gerstet for family, for their ongoing support for our schools and the many other projects in this community. During the first portion of this program this afternoon, we honor years of service to public education. These years may be in Midland Public Schools, in other districts in our state, or around the nation. These years may also be as a teacher, a counselor, a therapist, or an administrator. Each of the individuals I'm about to acknowledge will receive a certificate with a pin from the Midland City Education Association indicating their years of service. This recognition will take place at many of the end-of-the-year programs at individual buildings. I would like to ask these individuals to stand and be recognized. Please hold your applause until each group is standing. If you are celebrating 25 years of service in public education, would you please stand? students 
that we reach out to every day is our driving force. Because of you, the students of Midland Public Schools have truly been able to experience the excellence that is Midland Public Schools. Thank you to all of our educators who give so generously of your time, wisdom, and compassion every day in the Midland Public Schools classrooms. Especially this evening, we want to send our sincere, sincere thanks and very best wishes to our eight retirees for sharing your combined 234 years of service in public education with our students, family, and staff of Midland Public Schools. So it gives me great honor to recognize these um, eight individuals. If you would come down here and stand in front of the table, well, uh, I guess where we have eight, we won't hold our applause. Um, when we're done talking about each one a little bit, please feel to recognize their major contributions to MPS. First of all, Kurt Faust. Is Kurt with us tonight? Kurt is not. Let me read about him anyway. Kurt has given 25 years of service as a counselor to um, H.H. Dow High School. Before coming to MPS, Kurt taught at Beaverton Junior High. His career with MPS began in 1994 when he joined the counseling staff at Dow High. In addition, from 2003 to, through 2007, as many of us know, Kurt was the head football coach of the Dow High Charger varsity football team. Dan Mason, you want to join us up here, Dan? Sutton, Adams, 
Northeast, Jefferson, Dow High, and Midland High, as well as Blessed Sacrament and Good Shepherd. Congratulations, Charlie. Certain 
It's the emotionalism that's so darn uplifting when the awardees and their families and their peers are here uh, being recognized, a great surprise to them. But to me, it's mainly because this award is tangible evidence of how unique our Midland community really is. We value all of our kids and, and how we value their education. We expect excellence from everyone, students, teachers, parents, community members, regardless of their circumstance. Midland builds on its successes, seeks improvement, and celebrates and honors the students and grown-ups who make it happen. Our parents are involved in their kids' education, not just their athletic and other extracurricular activities. In Midland, academic success is not a dirty word. It's respected by adults and students. And Midland is blessed with donations of private money and citizens' talents from many, many sources that enhance our public education system and our community. In summary, the Gerst Stafford Award, as did Carl and Esther, represent the spirit of the community we have here in Midland. I use the word community with conviction and precision, as to some degree, I've often wished our official name was Midland Community Schools rather than Midland Public Schools. It's because in every sense, as typified by this award and ceremony, our schools truly are a reflection of our community. They reflect our value in education, our willingness to put our time and our treasure and our professional lives towards the education of our young people. And while we live in a global community, with many members, maybe even most, not from Midland. And while we have many students, maybe even most, who will not reside in Midland later, it is truly a tribute to our community that its aspirations for our kids remain unified and unequivocal. The Gerstecker Award combines all these aspects of community. It's an opportunity for peers, students, parents, community members, and maybe the most heartening graduated students to recognize those educators who uniquely have stood above and beyond in their impact on our students. So this is an award given by our community, sponsored by members of our community, to our outstanding teachers. And while all our employees at MPS have an impact on our kids in one way or another, teachers are the front face of our community to each individual child. And those, te and those teachers who become awardees are those who by definition have uniquely applied their craft their caring and their dedication in a significant manner and consistent manner, thereby receiving true recognition and, dare I say, honor from those closest to them. True recognition and honor, not money, not an attaboy from the boss, not generic applause from the community, but the overwhelming consensus of those most important in this endeavor, students, parents, fellow teachers, and alumni who are so convicted in their beliefs about a nominee that their testimonials and enthusiasm result in convincing the selection committee that their peer truly stands above and beyond in her or his positive impact on our kids. As this is true recognition and honor from who matters, it's not surprising that the awardee annou announcements in retrospect seem rather self-evident after the fact. They are darn good at what they do and stand as shining examples to us all of what is appreciated and known from their efforts by our entire community. But true recognition really is not even from these intimate sources, as valuable as they are, but from somewhere much more powerful. Emerson once said, the reward of a thing well done is to have done it. Anything valued by us is not the item or event itself, but what it took to achieve it. Be it refinishing a piece of furniture yourself, it's not the chair that's valued, it's the effort and care it took to restore it. Be it honors at graduation, to the student, it's not the name of the program or the honor court that's valued. It's the memory of work and time that went into achieving. Be it a victory in athletics, it's not the winner of the trophy. It's the hours of practice and training that resulted in the win. Be it the wedding ceremony of a child that's precious to parents. It's the efforts of childbirth, the efforts of reading the same book three times in the same night, the effort of going to countless games, performances, the effort of settling arguments among siblings, the effort of the financial sacrifices, and yes, the effort of enduring sleepless nights when the baby cried, and again, 16 years later, when the teenager is still not home with the car. It's those efforts that ultimately give you pride in the adult now standing before you at the altar. And while the recognition and honor in the form of this Fierce Decker Award is powerful and wonderful, I suspect our awardees have long ago found the effort is the rope award. The reward comes from extra help to a grade schooler that may result in a hug. 
The reward is from taking extra time and patience to coach a player not as talented as another and may result in a thank you from an appreciative parent. And the reward is from the challenge and opportunity to give a middle school student to just get through peer pressure, maybe resulting in an invitation to a graduation open house. And maybe, just maybe, the reward is from the several time you spent tutoring and mentoring a decade ago graduated student through significant academic struggles in high school, resulting in a now young adult just dropping by one day to say hello. You see, Emerson was wise and insightful. It's the efforts that are the true rewards. And that award can only be granted by each of you, not our committee. And maybe, just maybe, if at some time in the future, you teachers are fortunate enough to have our students, returning students stop by to just say, hey, always remember what someone with much less literary standing than Emerson, Louis Armstrong, so literally penned. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do, when they're really saying, I love you. For it's our efforts, not our rewards, that truly make this a wonderful world. With that, I'll hand this over to Janet Gregeis uh, to introduce our first awardee.
Body temptations. <laughs> body temptations, yes. Public school at Midland High, where she devoted herself to teaching and reforming the students in speech, drama, debate, and public speaking. We had hoped that she would return to her roots, but we knew she was too far gone, had crossed <laughs> and directed, do patent leather shoes really reflect? <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is a doctor in the house. <laughs>
such as, it's not a hard knock life for us with Sue. <laughs> We'd like to thank you, Mrs. Lombardo. Chemix, no, we like her here. You're never fully dressed without a Sue. <laughs> we don't need anything but Sue. At this year's finale, will be a huge number renamed we got Susie! <laughs> so please, come on out to NYC this year and join us on unveiling the soundtrack with a new twist to an old favorite. And thanks, Mrs. Lombardo, for bringing me to the stage at MHS. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
um, to say that I love the job that I'm able to do. <clears throat> I did not understand that. Every year, I get a chance not only to teach children in the classroom, but also have a chance to get to know them after school. Hours and hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> when they leave us after the four years, uh, we always have a big drama banquet. And it goes on for hours because it's so hard to say goodbye. Because all of these kids feel like they're my kids. Um, because we've lived together so long and had so many wonderful experiences. The wonderful thing is when they come back to visit, and that is so true, as was pointed out, is that they they do take a little bit of you back with them and stay with them forever. But they stay with uh, with me as well, and they stay in our heart, and will always be there. And I think that's the most wonderful gift that a person can have, is to not only be able to do that, but also um, to have it as an occupation, uh, not a job, but as an occupation, and um, to get paid while you're having fun doing it. So thank you very much. Accusing the guy of trying to pull a prank on her, 
She challenged him to produce some ID. He did. The guy was telling the truth, and uh, they swiftly fell in love. <laughs> While in Ann Arbor, this honoree completed her student teaching at first grade at Thurston Elementary. Then after leaving Ann Arbor and the University of Michigan, our recipient moved to Midland, where she worked at the nuclear power plant. Perhaps that's why she always has a warm glow for her. <laughs> <laughs> after teaching stints at St. Michael's in Pinconi, St. James in Bay City, Blessed Sacrament in Midland, Title I in Longview, St. John and St. Bridget's in Midland, this candidate earned an interview with Midland Public Schools by walking to the administration building almost daily, often with her toddler Elizabeth in tow, to check the postings. Maybe her persistence impressed the Director of Human Resources because she was hired as a third grade teacher at East Lawn Elementary. Interestingly enough, this candidate's mother-in-law, now get this, grew up in a house that stood on the corner where East Lawn Elementary was eventually built. And this teacher began her career, when her teacher began her career there. Her future husband attended the school <coughs> in the first grade, and her daughter attended for six years. This teacher has a Ms. Fizzle space dress to kick off her space unit that's straight out of Magic School Bus. And for her upper elementary government unit, this teacher's role was always as Governor G. Each bill from each class was to go to her after the House and Senate approved, and without fail, she would veto. <laughs> <laughs> this was great, but she got quite the reputation with the kids, and she always and because she always vetoed their bills. For all her youth, this recipient became a great grandmother a few years ago. Like many devoted teachers, she extends science kids activities beyond the basics, sometimes going to extremes. A few years ago, her classroom painted lady butterflies, emerged and soon laid eggs. The larvae developed, and sure enough, they became butterflies. This teacher and her students faithfully provided mallow leaves and sugar water to continue the life cycle. This went on until the third generation of insects came along. And it just might happen again this year, because right now, at Adams Elementary, there's a net full of fluttering butterflies. And she has vowed not to release those critters until they give her some eggs. <laughs> Spoken like a true great grandmother. <laughs> This first stacker recipient has been the chairperson for the School Improvement Committee for East Lawn Elementary, a member of the district, Adams and East Lawn Science Professional Development Committee. She participated in the extended mathematics training at the University of Illinois at Chicago, was a member of the science support staff at S. Cubers for the Systemic Science Initiative, a recipient of two 3M math lab grants, and an exchange teacher at Scotland, Australia, and Japan. This first actor award winner and her husband Steve live in Midland and have a daughter Elizabeth, who was recently married to her fiance Steve. Parents and colleagues have stated never did this teacher just teach. She explored, learned, and discovered along with her students. After attending a special science workshop, this teacher was able to share a small moon rock with her students. And former, a former student states, she gave me my voice and the confidence to ask questions without fear. This teacher doesn't just teach the curriculum to her students. She teaches them life skills, manners, kindness, patience, flexibility, and understanding with her actions and demeanor. Everything she does, she does with the purest of intentions with the students at the center. May I present the Grissacker Award winner from Adams Elementary, Ms. Mary Jo
I look around this room and I, I thank you very much. And I'm, I'm honored and, and thinking of and looking all around this room and thinking of everybody in here who deserves this award, probably more than me, but here I stand. But I, I really am honored and I thank you. And, and people in this room really are, I can see our treasured, treasured friends. Thank you.
she has to her students in the East Lawn School. She finds the good in each student and celebrates that with each child. As a former reading recovery teacher and specialist, she has a special place in her heart for those who struggle to read. And they said her mission to have all of her students at Benchmark before they leave her room. She makes sure that everyone feels welcome at East Lawn, whether you are a student, parent, or a volunteer. Her classroom has an open and inviting atmosphere where everyone feels welcome. The Lunchbox Learner Program at East Lawn is something that she strongly believes in and without her help would not be the program that it is today. Our first step of winter is never too busy to help a teacher or a student in need. She's East to square. <laughs> Today, an observer in her classroom would be hard-pressed to think of any other teacher doing the work she does with the same level of expertise <laughs> and with such a healthy balance of ease and humor. She is a master of both the science and art of teaching. She is most deserving of this award. In her own words, as outlined <laughs> in her candidates page, <laughs> from Central Michigan University in 1988, I quote, my mom and dad <laughs> instilled in me a high level of self-respect and self-worth. I learned that in order to be liked and respected by others, I had to like and respect myself. She continues, my parents also taught me to value my own opinion and to stand up for what I believe in, even though others believe differently. Yeah. <laughs> Above all, this is the best part, I have learned to be accepting of others, despite their shortcomings. <laughs> would look at this old tire service station and see a dilapidated mess or perhaps they'd simply drive by without even noticing it. The thing about Amy is she noticed she stopped to snap this picture 
because when she looked at it, she saw beauty, character, history, and possibility. The thing about Amy is, when she looks at all people, children, parents, staff, friends and family, she sees beauty, she sees history, she sees character, she sees possibility. The thing about Amy is everything in her life has worked together to make her the amazing teacher that she is today. The joy of reading. The wonder of writing. The amazement of math, science, and social studies. But don't take our word for it. Let's hear what others have to say. Congratulations, Amy. I'm so happy for you. You are a true role model to me in my teaching. But best of all, you are such a good friend. You've always been there for me, and I couldn't ask for a, a more special person in my life. Teach us all you can. Oh, what can I say about Amy? There's so many wonderful things to say about Amy. She is the best person I've ever met. She goes above and beyond everything. She is there for everyone, the kids. She's been terrific, and I am very thankful I met her and was able to come and be in her classroom. And I truly hope that I will be around many more years to see her. Congratulations, Amy. You really deserve it. She was respectful. She was kind. She helped everyone. Thank you is a word we often use to express appreciation or gratefulness or thankfulness for something. And we say it sometimes when someone opens a door for us or gives us an ice cream cone. And it seems really inadequate to use the word today to talk about you, Amy. But we are so thankful for who you are. Thank you for all you have done for students in your classroom and outside of your classroom and um, families here at East Lawn Elementary and um, we truly appreciate the woman that you are of, of integrity and of patience and um, we thank you for the lives and the impact that you've made in our community and um, I've had the pri privilege of partnering with you with Kids Hope USA here for almost seven years and um, I'm amazed to think of the lives that um, you have impacted here and so thankful um, to have been able to work with you. Congratulations. She was always nice to us. I almost wanted to have her as a teacher every year. <laughs> hey Amy, um, congratulations, finally. I've been waiting 20 years for this to happen, and I'm so glad that this honor is finally yours. I think about the time Judy Zack got the Gerstecker, and how Bob talked about how, yes, she's a great teacher, but she's an even better wife and mother. And I think the same can be said for you. It was such a joy and encouragement to see your dreams come true with Mark and then Nathan, Emily, and Max. I bet they're really proud of you today. Our friend John Wesley wrote, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. He could have simplified it by just saying, be like Amy. I've never known you to miss an opportunity to do good to anyone who needs it. I know right now in education and in schools, things are tough. But maybe you remember this quote that we had on the wall over at Segment. This is from William Willimon. Life's greatest burden is not in having too much to do, but in having nothing worthwhile to do. Everything you do is worthwhile, from being a child of God, to a wonderful wife and mother, and an extraordinary teacher. Anyone whose life is intersected with you has been blessed. I know I'm a better teacher because of the teacher you are. Enjoy the moment. And ponder these words. May it be on earth as it is in Texas, where all the weeds are wildflowers. Hook them! Hello, Mrs. Ray Fisher. You are one of the best teachers I ever had. And I always thought you were one of the nicest. And I love that little song, the, the Zero song. I love you, bye. Hi, my name is Mike, and I've known Amy for four and a half years. 
and I've seen her coming in out of the school hundreds of times, all different hours, whether it be for setting up for her students or trying to set up for a luncheon or a staff meeting or for cleaning up. And I want to say, Amy, congratulations on your award. What a great job. And don't come in tonight. <laughs> Take the night off and don't stay over and help clean up at, after. To learn and never be filled is wisdom. To teach and never be weary is love. I would like to introduce Mrs. Amy Rifleshark.
president of the Midland Board of Education, Midland Education Association, our MPS retirees, your state for award recipients, and the families and colleagues of those who are honored today. A, special, a very special thank you to the Gerstacker family for their continued recognition of the outstanding educators of our district. I am honored uh, to be representing H.H. Dow today, our school family, in presenting this very esteemed award, esteemed award for excellence in teaching. It takes a very special kind of person to dedicate their lives to education. Throughout my tenure, I have had opportunities to see exceptional educators change student lives. There's no way to know how people choose their careers, but the passion that some of them have for teaching is something they have all shared. Teachers all possess very specific skills, and that makes them proficient in their areas of expertise. In the case of the arts, I've learned that one must meet some very specific criteria to be one of those passionate educators. First, you've got to be an exceptional teacher. Second, be intensely dedicated. Third, display a wide variety of professional and interpersonal skills. Fourth, be willing to be out of your house for at least 100 nights a year. Fifth, possess the ability to master at least one musical instrument and perform at a professional level. Be willing to spend the hottest days of summer, sort of like in here tonight, <laughs> grueling practices in the heat, and also willing to perform charger rallies that celebrate state-level recognition achieving clubs, athletic, and student activities. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, truly exceptional teachers live for students' breakthrough moments. When I considered all the aspects of this position, I have to acknowledge that teachers in the arts possess some very specific attributes. Not being particularly skilled in any particular art myself, I decided to dig a little deeper into what makes this kind of teacher tick, a teacher so passionate about music as they are about all of those breakthrough moments. I came across a few more characteristics. 27 years in public education, Previous career teaching in two different districts before joining the Midland Public Schools instructional staff. A graduate of Central Michigan University. A wife that is also a teacher with Midland Public Schools and two beautiful daughters. After those notes, a very specific educator should jump to mind. But I'm not quite done describing him yet. During the tenure of this teacher, the average yearly enrollment in his classes went from 80 to well over 200 members. In both 2000 and 2009, the Michigan School Band and Orchestra Association named him Band Director of the Year for District 5. The Creative 360 recently honored him as the Arts Angel for 2010, recognizing him for his work with the jazz bands at H.H. Dow High School. He was awarded the 2011 Dow High Saginaw Valley High School Teacher of the Year. His recognizable achievements, however, are not even the most memorable pieces of his portfolio. A letter from a Dow High student's grandmother highlights the kind of heart he is known for with these comments. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. This was our introduction to an amazing teacher at H.H. Dow High School. In the fall of 2009, our granddaughters enrolled in Dow High. Brittany has cerebral palsy and uses a walker. As Mr. Jerese took note of Brittany's walker and said without a hesitation, without missing a beat, we'll figure it out and we'll make it work. And made it work, he did. Britt was pushed in a wheelchair by her dad when the marching band entered the stadium for the football games. When the band went on the field to do its routine, Britt stood on the field near the drum major directing, directing the band and proudly played her trumpet. Inclusivity is a principle that is often touted and one to which lip service is frequently given. Mr. Stephen Jerese's actions shout it. Band directors are judged by the performance of their students on the football field. The director's goal is perfection. 
by going in the wrong direction, being out of step, having a walker, it is noticed. Mr. DeRees put Brittany as a person with a walker ahead of the perfection of the marching band. When the marching band, when the band marched in the homecoming parade, one of the drum majors pushed her in the wheelchair. This was an important les lesson of inclusion taught by Mr. DeRees to that particular student and also to the band. This is what Dow High students do for their classmates. They include them. We'll make it work. These words were a statement affirming an attitude of instant acceptance and inclusion. Mr. DeRees has the recommended skill set and more. He's talented, creative, dedicated, professional, and intense about his passion for teaching. However, Mr. DeRees, you have something else I couldn't research if I wanted to. Further reading the letters is the proof I needed. A colleague noted, due to Steve's inspirational teaching and guidance, I chose to major in music education in college. I can happily report I'm in my sixth year teaching band in grades 6 through 12 in a rural school district in Michigan. Throughout my college years now as a fellow music educator, Steve was always willing to offer his help when he could. Steve has an excellent ear for what makes a band sound well. His professionalism and musical knowledge have become more and more clear to me the longer I am his colleague, and not just his student. Mr. Duris is an outstanding educator. He's appreciated by both students and parents. One parent noted, Mr. Duris is teaching his students to play well in life, and his lessons will be some of the most valuable our students carry with them as they graduate from high school. Many, many thanks, Mr. Duris. A Dow High parent said, my children have loved the camaraderie created in the DHS band environment, and Steve DeReese has much influence in fostering this positive outlet for students. He joins in and plays along with the pep bands at away football games, and he performs in rent fair. He advises past and present students with genuine concern for their well-being. He is one of the finest teachers that we know because he's an expert in his field and he knows how to share his insights with his students. The example that Mr. DeRees sets through his sheer love of music and passion for teaching is one that his students recognize without a doubt. One former student wrote the following. The most effective way Steve inspires his students to achieve is his own musicality, teaching by example. I remember sitting in jazz band one morning at 7 a.m. and being amazed at how well he was able to improvise on his saxophone. He then asked each of us to play an improvised solo. My friends and I kept saying, there is no way we're going to compete with that. He played saxophone in college. He must have heard our grumblings, because next thing I knew, he was playing the trumpet right along with us. Trumpet's not his main instrument. He made his point without saying a word. We saw him take a risk by playing an instrument that was not his main instrument. The least we could do would be to try an improvision. Steve's musicianship allowed him to play multiple instruments well, but his teaching ability allowed us to take musical risks we never would have before. Life lessons are taught to students, not only from books, but from the actions of their teachers. We all know from our own experiences that actions do speak louder than words. That level of compassion isn't something that can be read in books or graded on tests. The we'll work it out and we'll make it work moments are born out of experience and selfless consideration. So, Mr. DeRees, this is your life, your chosen career, a perfect match, and so much more your exceptional leadership by example, and the way you live for your students' breakthrough moments make you a perfect candidate for the Gerst Actor Teacher Award. But you're also a charger. You encompass the strength, the pride, the integrity, the respect, intensity, and tradition that make charger spirit. So it seems only fitting, Mr. DeRees, that your band celebrate with you your achievements with the sound of charger spirit.
Thank you for attending this afternoon, and please join us in honoring our winners once again for the round of applause. 